Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? I'm doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing? Every time I add something different to the rundown, I always say what I normally say, and I don't know why. Well, <laughs> whatever. It works, and we don't stumble over the intro, so hey, keep doing what you're doing. Yep, and I am going to stumble over to more intros because tonight it's not just the two of us. We actually are preparing for a crossover by inviting a lot more voices to the show. We have, of course, back with us again, Veronica Rose. Hey, guys. How you doing? Yep, and the (laughs) crossover would not be complete without our buddy, our friend, and Earth One co-host... Pacing P is back. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to both of you. Thanks for having Thank me you. on. This is uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully. Don't ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. None whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's only three hours of TV with a lot yeah. of plot, a lot of characters, a lot of Easter eggs. No, nothing big. <laughs> Yeah, no, not just, at all. Just, no, just, and just one massive like ending that you know set Twitter ablaze. Oh god! <laughs> yes, <laughs> Twitter is the most flammable thing on the internet. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. I think some of the Facebook chat rooms are probably pretty pretty hyped up too. All right, I, I let's get started with a flash hour one. Um, this is my favorite episode of The Flash this season. <laughs> easily, easily. Easily, easily. <laughs> Mine too, since I haven't been watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, have you been keeping up with The Flash? I've only seen the first two episodes, and I watched the, hundred, the hundredth episode because they had uh, Reverse Flash and Zoom back in it. And I was curious to see how that was... Going and honestly, after watching the hundredth episode, I felt like I didn't need to. See, maybe it's because I watched the first two already, so I knew that Nora, Barry and Iris' mm-hmm. daughter, was in it. But I didn't feel like I needed to know much else what was going on to really be caught up because of the fact that they're kind of like going back and digging into the Reverse Flash stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and Cicada, quite honestly, is a very underwhelming. Uh, baddie so far this season i've I've said he's the villain of the week in in many ways well that's the guy from uh, chris klein's always going to be the guy from american pie for me so to see him as like the villain is kind of like oh okay (laughs) (laughs) okay does he talk like that always or is his cicada voice like a phony made-up thing it's it's kind of funny actually like it's not threatening at all and and you know, in, in the 100th episode, they made it seem like they finally, uh, you know, figured out how to defeat him, and then they didn't. And I guess they're going to just keep carrying it on, but then they threw through this... Um, I don't know if you guys saw the 100th episode, but they kind of teased that yep. nor has been in yeah. contact with yep. um, yeah. Eobard, who's alive in the future. So I don't know what they're going to do with that, but it did kind of pique my interest, so I might go back to watching The Flash, but I really, I really haven't watched The Flash a whole lot, so... Yeah, the the teaser gets you, and you're like, "Oh, this is why I watch this show." Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's like he's back. He's back, but yeah. he's not back. I mean, he even showed up in the crossover. Yeah, but not really. Yeah, he did. yeah. well, let, let's yeah, no, let's just jump jump too far ahead. That's the that's, yeah. that's, that's chapter two. <laughs> I We're I still- don't know about you guys, but I got some major. The original cross crossover just between the Flash and Arrow after Barry becomes the Flash. That's yeah. what I felt some serious vibes in, especially this first hour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. they play off well with each other. You know, the the dynamic is pretty good considering. You know, like we did get kind of a a goofy Oliver in this um, crossover, but I really like the the two of them together when they play off each other so yeah. i i actually enjoyed it i mean like i said i haven't been keeping up with flash so it's definitely my favorite flash episode this season <laughs> i like to say that we got Stephen amell 
in this crossover and not Oliver Queen. <laughs> in a weird way. <laughs> right. Okay, what did you guys make of Amazo and Ivo Labs? I thought that was a weird thing that they put in there because I'm so used to thinking about Amazo related to Arrow and not the Flash. Yeah. I you know, I didn't I'll be honest, I didn't even catch um in the beginning that it was Ivo Labs. I just was like, oh my god, there's a droid that t- sucks superpowers from the heroes. Like, what's up with that? And then Somebody had mentioned it on Twitter, and I was like, oh, wait, that's the wrong show. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, wait. Um, But if, if, you know, I I, honestly, I had almost forgotten all about him and Amazo, and I didn't even put two and two together with the ship and everything. I'm so. It wasn't until, yeah, it wasn't until after the show aired that I was like, oh. I totally got some Sentinel vibes. I was like, oh, this is DC TV mm-hmm. Sentinels. Okay. Um, because it reminded me of, of uh, Days of Future Past. Yep. That was the first thing I thought of when, when, when uh, Amazo was doing all that. But then I thought, oh, well, this is this is going to be the, the person they fight at the end, which they ended up doing, Barry, Kara, and, and Oliver. Um, I mean, it was cool. I mean, it was it was a good like kind of lead-in to, to them. Not that we needed to see anything – prior to that because we already know they work well together as a team Mm -hmm. um but uh but just to talk real quick about that their team like i love watching the interaction between barry oliver and kara like we can seriously get rid of everything else and just have them and even superman in a show every week i would love that because what just I feel like Kara balances everything out with yeah. Oliver and Barry yeah. and yeah. makes it so much more like lighthearted and funny. And, and you know, that's the heart right there. If there was a show, she's the heart. She would be the heart of the show. And, um, and I just love watching them interact. And I watch, I loved watching the interaction in this one in part two and three. Yeah. I, this is also my favorite Kara arc like i've loved supergirl this season but i haven't been a fan of kara necessarily and um she was so freaking funny and she just was the was the sister to oliver and barry's brother dynamic um Mm -hmm. and and i sort of missed that as it was weird because i missed it the most in hour three because she was in star labs for majority of that episode um, but in the other two hours, that's where she really shined and she was able to anchor. And then she spent the most time with Batwoman. Come on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. World's finest. World's finest. Yeah. I, um, I, I agree that uh, with everything everyone said. And I think the other, the other piece that I really liked was how they, how do you utilize Superman in this episode? Um, as far as being that that fourth wild, that sort of wild card in in, in the, the in the group, because uh, I think this is really the, the first time all four of them have fought together, and so it was. It, and, and given that Barry and Oliver has switched places as far as their as far as their powers, um, how they learned how to use the, the best of each other's powers to be able to uh, defeat Amazo and also just Barry uttering, you have felt this city. <laughs> <laughs> it's so classic. It's yeah. classic now. I, and then also Stephen Amell's ad lib of doing the thumbs up at the yeah. end when they save the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was watching it. And that, was like, that, that was ad lib. That was ad lib. Yeah. That was ad lib. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it make it that much more delightful? <laughs> well, I, yeah, and, yeah. I, and that's one of the things I really enjoyed about uh, part one was just seeing Steven just let his comedic chops just come through. I mean, he just seemed, you know, given that he has to play dark brooding Oliver all the time, he was like, I'm going to, you know, I get to be Sonny Barry Allen. And he just took it and ran with it. And it was, <laughs> it was just, it was just, it, it, you could see how much fun he was having playing playing the Flash. 
yeah. and it just oozed off the screen. Not only the first time I watched it, but when I watched it the second time, I, I think I laughed even more uh, because just just how how he just you know used the, t- the timing, the jokes, everything just r- worked really really well. And, and again, just how well Stephen and, and, and Grant play off each other, uh, but What's also it? just. But also, again, just allowing him to be, just allowing him to be funny. Mm-hmm. What did you guys think about Iris and Barry in that episode? Um, because at the end of it, she, there's a really power, um, I don't want to say powerful, but a strong moment between them. And she warns him about becoming Oliver Queen. Do you think she's had that fear for a while and it's finally come to light or... Are they going to connect that back into what's currently going on between the West Allen clan with Nora? You know, I I haven't watched enough to really like follow what's gonna what's been going on between Iris and Barry um, to know like to be able to really say a whole lot. All I know is that um, I think that because Iris is kind of like a complete and total optimist. And she kind of lives in this, like, I don't know, in the beginning when she was like, oh, my God, the Flash, the Flash. And she was writing about him. She was, like, his biggest fan. I feel like she kind of gets wrapped up in, like, all the goodness of it. And just when she said that, like, I know that, you know, the fandom was so divided between some people like, oh, how could she say that? And the other were like, oh, yeah, definitely. And this, in a way, I think she just wants, she likes her lighthearted fun husband and the idea of him being anything but just doesn't set, sit well with her that's a good point and i think back to season three as far as the and some of the other situations where they've or even last year even season four with uh when he was uh uh in 4a dealing with uh, with a thinker and how uh, they had their light moments, and they were having their, you know, adjustments to um, to life. But um, there were some moments where Barry did get dark, in particular, you know, with season three. With that, you know, and, and I guess she knows what could happen if he went down that dark path because of of what he became uh, as Savitar. And mm-hmm. so I think I think she was worried if he go, goes down that dark path. We, we know we, we've seen what could happen to Barry Allen if he, if he if he gets dark and 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 becomes more Oliver like versus the sunny you know sunshine and rainbows Barry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And so in hour two, we head over to Gotham City. Um. Okay, guys, let's talk about it. Ruby Rose. How was she? <laughs> More <laughs> she Batwoman. She was amazing. More Batwoman. Yes. Yeah. More Batwoman. Yeah. I know. Like, I don't I knew know if she... I want more Batwoman more than I want more Supergirl and Batwoman together. Well, it's honest. <laughs> <laughs> the combination. Because... <laughs> Because I felt like the cameo itself was so small that I still don't have a real understanding of her as a character. I'm intrigued, um, but it also felt very one note. Um, so I'm kind of I'm kind of mad for all the hype that we only got um, so, such a fine amount of her or a small amount of her. Oh, well, I was just say I was say yeah, I agree with with you, Sarah. Because as much as I enjoyed her appearance, it's really nothing like when they introduced. Flash in that episode of Arrow way back in was that season two or three of Arrow when they that was it was originally supposed to be um you know just an episode featuring him and then they loved it so much that they it turned into the pot you know they led to the pilot um but you didn't get that sense here at all it really stuck with the crossover story and then she played her part in you know them trying to find Deegan and learn more about him and get the book and and uh and yeah like i totally agree with you sarah like i wish we would have gotten a little bit more i think the hype was a little overblown for what we got but with what we did get though i thought i was really impressed with what with how ruby rose was and 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 portraying the character and um and she was a badass um you know my, my daughters loved her as soon as she was on screen they were like trying to mimic all the 
move she was doing the very brief. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would love to see, I would love to see a show that picks up on Batwoman. That'd be awesome. Uh, I honestly, I was under the impression that she was going to be in the entire crossover. I didn't realize that they were just having her in the era crossover and it was going to be so small. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't see so, the way. Yeah, I think we was, all thought that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, there were like two. Yeah, that and also just having the uh, even flash from Barry Allen from the Earth ninety. I, I thought that uh, we would have had more of of him as well. The way uh, whenever they did start releasing photos and stuff from the crossover, uh, it, it seemed that they were going to have much larger roles. Uh, we got that, more that, Superman than either one yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. if, you know, folks, are, if they're if they're teasing out the possibility of a backdoor pilot, that this was definitely more more so for Superman than. Uh, they definitely have thoughts on that when we get to part three. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would say that <clears throat> knowing because I've been a fan of Ruby Rose for a very long time, that just what I've seen her in in other movies. I would think that she would probably really carry that show so well if they gave it to her. Um, she's she's just a really cool person overall. And I think that she could portray Batwoman well. And if they were to go ahead and greenlight this, I you know, I would definitely be a diehard fan of it. Yeah. Yeah, I would too. I, I liked I mean what what we were given uh is definitely <laughs> It's definitely enough enough there that I think if she if the show's written well and, and carefully, then there there's uh, clearly they could just take their reverse to the next level um, mm-hmm. with that character. Um, I I think I think before they do that though, I, I think it would be it would be cool to see her show up. Um, uh, you know, and, and so maybe many crossovers, you know, like like they did with season one of, of the Flash when they had Oliver uh, come over. Uh, maybe they could do the, do that with Supergirl since they played so well off each other. Um, that would be really cool. I think I think the appetite is there in fandom that if she were to do any subsequent mini crossovers, do it on do it on Supergirl. Yeah. Well, what's interesting yeah. about that, Hank, is is you know we'll get to season we'll get to episode uh, part three in just a bit here, but the way they left it, I almost felt like they're teasing her being on Arrow because she talks directly to Oliver. So I, I wondered if that is teasing her and maybe future appearances because obviously they're not gonna. I mean, I, I really hope they don't have that little cliffhanger and then we have to wait an entire year for Crisis and that's all we get. Yeah. With the back door. Like I, I hope that was some sort of backdoor tease that we're going to see her, um, if anything, on Arrow. Because that's just because, even though we loved her interaction with Kara, it seemed to me like they they want, and, and obviously they're on the same Earth. Um, it seemed to me that that Arrow might be the back door that that we see Batwoman come through. I love how yeah. Oliver did not want to believe in the Batman myth. He was very <laughs> Primarily yeah. because he's the original vigilante, quote unquote. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Both I love it. Them. I love it. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. So, so since we talked about Batwoman then, what about Arkham Asylum? Um, was it a missed opportunity, did you guys think? Or did they utilize that set to its fullest potential? I I will freely say I thought they used it to their fullest potential. I yeah. I, I even said it's like it was like a visual encyclopedia of DC comics. I mean, between as they would as you know, he's Cobblepot, Poison mm-hmm. Ivy. I mean, it, it it was just like yes, there you know the the Bane mask. Whenever Cassandra Freeze was uh, Doctor, you know, uh, or Victoria. Well, I'm saying Cassandra because it's. You know Stephen's wife, but, <laughs> but uh, when Nora, Nora freezes, yes. uh, was uh, uh, in in that scene with Killer Frost, you saw the Bane mask sitting there on the on the shelf. I mean, it was just that the Arkham Asylum was just like, okay, we're going to do fan service for you for the next you know X number <laughs> of minutes. Enjoy it, and it, it it it. I thought I thought those scenes were carried off very well very effectively you know all you know culminating in scarecrows 
uh, psychotropic drugs, uh, causing Oliver and Barry to uh, have visions of reverse flasks and 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 and, and Merlin. I was not expecting Merlin. I don't remember being <laughs> pleased about him. Um, but I, I thought it was interesting how, so in the first hour one, they spent a lot of time talking about the differences of how Oliver and Barry use their powers and are able to tap into that, that strength. Um, it comes from very different places. And then in hour two, the, in the Arkham, they end up learning more about the motivation um, because they're squared off with their arch nemesis. I, although I guess I guess why partly I'm disappointed because the arrow gr- the arrow fangirl in me. I'm like really out of all of them, you chose Malcolm. Where's freaking Prometheus? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> or Deathstroke. <laughs> but you yeah. chose Malcolm. Yeah. But you but you well, did I get did. Some, but you did get some Deathstroke. Yeah, with Jericho. With Jericho. It's not the same, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would have expected Prometheus for sure. I was I was thrown by them having Malcolm Merlin. I mean, um I, I don't know. I feel like Oliver kind of put Malcolm to rest in a sense once, you know, the whole thing with Thea and and him dying on the island to protect them and what have you. I just feel like if we had, you know, if they had thought about it, maybe they would have been like, oh, yeah, he put Malcolm Rowan to rest. We don't need to bring him back into this. Let's go ahead and do Prometheus. And even if it was simple fact that maybe Josh um, couldn't appear on the show for that cameo, they could have at least put somebody in the costume. Yeah, because, you know? I mean, he's going up against Tom, Tom Cavanaugh as Eobard Thawne, the reverse fat Flash, arguably one of the best villains in the Arrowverse. <laughs> So, right. <laughs> that and well, been like a strategic thing though, because you know, a lot of a lot of viewership has kind of fallen off over the years with with all the shows. Um, and so maybe they're going, okay, well, maybe if we introduce characters from like the first season, people will you know because because you know it, it's just I, I'm just speaking as if you know, just seeing what I've seen on Twitter. A lot of people may not know about Prometheus. So I think I agree that Prometheus probably would have been a better choice because of his ties to Oliver. But it might have been a strategic thing where, like, let's just go back to their first villains, which would be obviously be Flash. For Flash, it's Eobard Thawne. For, for Arrow, it's Malcolm Merlin. So it might have been a strategic thing to do that. And it might have just been easy for them to do that. But I think I think Prometheus would have been a lot more interesting in, like, in that scene would what, what had happened. No, that's a that's a fair point, Pete. Yeah. I disagree. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you for saying that, but yeah, I guess you're right. Jeez. No, I could be co- totally wrong. I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying it could be strategic, that's all. Y- you know, speaking of villains, um, we have the Monitor and John Deacon or Deegan? Deegan. Deegan. Deegan, um, throughout the crossover arc, I was very surprised by the monitor. I liked him. I liked the portrayal. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of the the sets he was on, um, I hated. Um, I could see where the budget went and where it didn't go. But I also, he captured my attention anytime he was on. He sold it. He did. Mm -hmm. Whatever he he was trying to sell, he sold. Definitely. I mean, yeah. there's there's so much going on that, you know, in the, within this show, but if people just took the time to really kind of focus on the monitor and, and like, for those of us who know about him as a comic book character, they would have been a lot more excited about seeing him on the, the crossover. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the whole aspect of how he, basically he's in charge of the multiverse, I mean... Um, that whole thing just was like, I was just sitting there like screaming in my head, you know, I don't actually scream out loud, but I was feeling so excited. I, I couldn't contain it. I was just sitting there like, oh my God, oh my God, I want to talk about this because having him there and backtracking to all the things I remember reading about in the comic books and stuff like that over the years, I'm just like, oh, I couldn't believe that when they 
announced that he was going to be on, I was like, God, he better do a good job. And oh my God, that guy killed it. He nailed he it. He killed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I agree. <clears throat> Yeah, he he totally nailed it. And you know, whenever we we when we saw that the monitor was going to be on, I was I think we we did our pre-show, and I was like, this looks like it's leading towards crisis, and I'm saying, and it, and it is. And mm-hmm. but I, I I liked. I know Sarah, you were talking about the budget, and yeah, it did they did repurpose the set, look like from Star Trek Generations, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it it worked it it, it worked yeah. and and i i hope we, we i hope it's not until we'll, we'll probably will be you know until the crossover next year that we'll see the monitor again but i'm hoping somehow some way they will will drop little crumbs through the the second half of each of the show's respective seasons um referencing the build up to to the cross to to crisis. Yeah, I um so we all are pretty unanimous about the monitor, but in yeah. terms of John Deegan, he, he he was very flawed for me and not in a good way um because I didn't understand why our one the only change he made after receiving the book was switching Barry and Oliver um, that we were aware of. And it wasn't until later in hour three where he really thought bigger. So I don't understand why the monitor chose him only for him to make a very small change that didn't even affect him as far as I could tell, um, only to then later be given the chance again and then really take it a bit too far. He got, took it a bit too far. I don't know your thoughts on it, you guys. I think um, when we get introduced in Crisis on Infinite Earth, we're going to get introduced to Mm Anti-Monitor, and he recruits Deegan. So we're, I think it's leaving that little hole to kind of start pumping us up for what's going to come. And I think answers will come then. I don't know. I, I don't know if, if the shows are going to little by little for the rest of the season, start dropping more and more hints about what's going to be coming. Um, so for me with him, with Deegan, I want to kind of wait on how I'm going to judge him because at first I was like, well, what, you know, maybe he was like jealous of the flash and green arrow because everybody raves about them. And maybe he was like, well, you know what? Screw you guys. I'm going to switch you up. Cause I think it's funnier. I don't know. They never did give us that, but I think, mm. um, you know, if we, if we hold off on that, we're going to start finding out a little bit more once the you know it, it, with throughout the rest of the season into the next before we get to the crossover again next year. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think the I think why he went sort of small before is he was only aware I guess when he first got the book maybe of, of the Earth One heroes. So you know it's it's Barry and Oliver, um, and so. Maybe switching them up, it was, yeah. Again, I think maybe it was just his inexperience and and not mm-hmm. thinking, not you know, not thinking grand as far as like what can I really do to like change up this universe. So, yeah. So I think I think you know, the monitor selected him as as I guess the the, the holder of the book. Uh, because I guess he probably did see the potential for him to to do grand mischief, uh, mm-hmm. but it was I think he he needed to sort of get uh, the, the channel the good place here. Uh, he 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 is co- he was constantly working on how to uh, you know, rejigger the the experiment. Yeah, and that got lost in the crossover, like yeah. what his original purpose was and why maybe the monitor picked him, because there was so much else going on that his art kind of got lost in there. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and to add on what you guys are saying, like it, it, as the crossover goes on and we get into part three and you really see how they can alter the realities, you kind of go back, at least I did, I went back thinking, well, then why did he only change Oliver and Barry and everything else stayed the same? So that, that did seem like a little flawed. I agree with you on that, Sarah. What are your thoughts then to go into our three? Um, we all saw the spoiler pictures of Tyler Hecklin in the black Superman outfit. So to find out in our three that it was really John Deegan um, def- changing, becoming Superman in this reality. Um, what were your thoughts on that choice? I, I thought it was good. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was gonna say the same. Oh, it, well, sorry. Yeah, I, yeah, it, uh, yeah, it, it, it made it made total sense for it to go that way, and I, I'm glad that they built it up that way instead of him immediately going into, you know, coming up with a scenario where he was the Superman, because if they had done that in a, in, in a chapter one of uh, the uh, the crossover event, then. You know, what more can you get than than you know, for a person who has unlimited power, other than a, other than a monitor who can like you know, take care of someone with the you know, pointing of the finger. So, <laughs> so I, yeah, it was it was a good strategic call, storytelling wise, to to have to to have a gr- build up to that point. Yeah, I think Superman being considered, you know, the all-American superhero, you know, in a sense, that it just seemed like a natural decision to become Superman and not any of the others, which makes sense to me. I mean, I, it, it, you know, he, this guy is wanting to be a hero. He wants to be loved and adored and revered. Mm -hmm. And who, who is all of that? Well, Superman, you know, so Mm -hmm. I was, I totally I personally dig the black Superman outfit, but I love black, so don't mind me. But yeah, no, I, <laughs> I totally was into that. That's a good point you made, though, about being adored, because, you know, whenever we were first introduced to Deegan, he was in his class and he was trying trying to mm-hmm. get that uh, mm-hmm. from from the students. And, and that's a very that's a very good point that you just raised there. So was it that he wanted to be Superman or that he wanted to be Supergirl? Because what I thought I was very interested in that um, conversation between him and Kara and how she doesn't exist on this earth from what he could tell. And so I couldn't get a good read on if there were implications in that conversation if Superman existed on that earth, but Kara didn't. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I could tell you my theory as to why, but I always don't know. tell me your theory, Veronica. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> don't hold because back. <laughs> I just feel like, in a sense, it's foreshadowing to Kara's death from, like, in the comic mm. books. You know. Mm. Okay, so, so be quiet. that's. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you, like, oh my, God, I'm gonna get so much hate, like I did last time I was on y'all's show. Oh God. Um. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, that's the thing that came to me when, when he started saying all that and, like, Alex had no idea that, you know, like, you're my sister, what, you know? I was like, oh, God, don't tell me that this is the earth where, you know, she gets killed. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. So that's kind of what I was thinking the whole time and why I felt like her being um, locked up and kind of, not a part of the hour three so much was that is a little bit of a foreshadowing there. Um, but that's just my theory. So don't, you know, don't hold me, hold it against me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know if either of the boys wanted to say anything. So I was oh, patiently um, waiting. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll, I, I, uh, I think that's an interesting theory because we really haven't, had any indication that there is a Supergirl on, on Earth One. Um, but uh, I think I, I kind of like that. I think it's, that's adds a different dynamic, especially to what could happen to her character in the future. I also thought it was interesting that Deegan did choose Superman to become when he really only has care to base his that off of, you know? 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and, and then you see him kind of like be shocked when Superman did appear like, Oh crap. Like you look exactly like me, but you're the actual complete opposite of me. Um, mm-hmm. but I thought that was really cool to do that. I actually did think I actually liked this version of Superman in the part three episode. Um, I'm a, I'm a very huge Superman fan. And so I was really interested to see how this, how this would work out. I, I, I haven't watched a whole lot of Supergirl, so I've seen a little bit of what um, of this CW Superman um, has brought to uh, to television. But I really liked um, this. I really liked. Uh, I can't say his last name. Tyler, what is his last name, Sarah? Hecklin. Tyler Tyler Hecklin. Uh, the Superman he grew on me, and to the point where I would like to see more of him. Um, and, and I didn't, and honestly, I didn't get that in part one. Like I, like I actually found some issues with uh, during the first episode. And part of that is because I felt like I, I might be jumping a little bit ahead here, but a lot of the Clark and Lois stuff seemed rushed to me. Mm-hmm. Like I get that it's a deve- that they're developed already in terms of their relationship and who they are as individuals, but we're really seeing this for the first time. And so this is where I was talking about earlier about Batwoman getting her show and Superman getting his own show. In my opinion, and, and you know, there's a lot of moving parts right now with Warner Brothers and, and, and their plans to bring in with what they're doing with, with Superman and, and the fact that they're already pushing for a Superman or Supergirl movie. Um, it, it really makes me wonder if they are moving towards something cinematically with Superman because it, if you, you're going to do a Superman TV show, I feel like stuff like that like announcing that she's pregnant watching them watching the proposal like that stuff would be saved for the television show so mm-hmm. the fact that they're introducing all this so quickly and the fact that he told Kara oh Kara I'm only I'm going to be gone for like 9 months or maybe longer they have no plan to me that that says that they have no plans to bring in Superman. And if he comes back, it's going to be very in a very limited fashion. Whereas with Batwoman, everything they did, I felt like they were going to be moving forward with a Batwoman TV show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. 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 I, I really liked Lois and Clark. And it's been a while since I've really appreciated that relationship. So I, I agree that everything, it felt rushed and it was weird and it was... Um, it took up a lot of more time than I had originally anticipated, um, but I I really like their chemistry between one another. I I think that they play off of each other well as actors. The scene that bothered me the most was the proposal scene because there's that moment where he's looking away, and and for a moment I felt they were they were gonna do that that weird twist where yeah. oh Deegan isn't fully gone yeah. Yeah. it still bothers me I'm like why why wouldn't that turn into a different direction um, with that setup I just it could that. it could you know I mean I they could have left that you know uh, they could have left that door open. You know, I, I, to me, you know, they didn't do that on just to do it. I felt like it was purposeful, but we're not going to know that for a while. I don't think, you know, and, and I hope it does pay off. I hope that we are, you know, we're going to we're probably going to theory spiral about this. But, you know, I hope that it does become something because you have this huge moment that could either lead to something massive or kind of ruined by the fact that he just dozed off for a second. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't, yeah. I didn't have a problem with the uh, the proposal scene. I thought it was, uh, again, I think it was a, a good way that, depending on how things, how people reacted to the Superman character, one they could they could go either direction. They could put it on the shelf and just have Superman come in recurring status. Or they could go in the direction of of a series, but I think the the more I think about it, I think it's better that he is more a recurring character because it would be very hard to have Superman and Supergirl coexist on the in in, in the same um, television space yeah. um, c- concurrent. 
And I, I thought the proposal scene was kind of a nice little homage to like Superman from Christopher Reeves and yeah. Margot Kidder. Totally. You know, that yeah. I thought that was really cool, especially my mother. She huge Christopher Reeves Superman fan. Like, oh my God, you can never tell her that he wasn't the best Superman of all time. <laughs> she will argue to the to the death on that. And so when she saw that, like, because I made her watch the whole crossover with me. Um, when she saw that, she was just, like, clapping, and she was all excited. She just thought it was so great. And it really was. I personally liked it. I thought it was really sweet. Um, I, you know, I don't know what's to come of all that, but if he's a recurring role in Supergirl, great. You know, but if not, and they give him his own show, then I guess we're going to take off to where all the other Superman shows never went. It's going to yeah. start where he's married and on. Mm. It's no longer going to be about the, the beginning. So yeah. who knows? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't need another Superman show because I have Krypton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Same You've thing, never exactly. seen Smallville. Are you trolling or you've never seen Smallville? No, I, I've seen Smallville. Oh, okay, okay. I just don't. I don't need another Superman show um, oh, okay, okay, gotcha, because okay. of the movies and everything. And we, we've had Smallville, um, but Pete, have you seen Krypton? You know, I just started watching it. I'm a couple of episodes in, and so um, I'm really digging what they're doing. Um, but I'll save my opinions for when I finish it. Oh, you have no <laughs> idea. You have no idea. Brace yeah. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. One of the things I like, though, is um, when they were in Argo and uh, they took Cisco into with the whole little like back and forth that went on in there. That was fantastic because um, the actor who plays Superman, Tyler, he he really fits in with those guys. He did such yeah. a great job looking like, you know, the total push my glasses on my nose kind of guy, just not quite quite getting their jokes but still enjoying them I, I love that whole thing so if they keep superman then like as a recurring role i hope that he's on all the shows every now and again because he's really good with them shout out to cisco yes. like, <laughs> yeah I, he he is such an underused actor because <laughs> Every now he and then is. they let him play something different, and he always nails it. He He's very much like a Tom Cavanaugh in the making. He is. Yes. So yeah. I just, I, I, I adored him in yeah. Hour 3. I think yeah, this was funny. my favorite I, alt Cisco. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I saw somebody tweet out or something like, why is Cisco always like, um, like, why is it when they go to like another Earth, like he's just this complete opposite, polar opposite of the Cisco we know. And I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with that. I love seeing him as, like, this boss, you know, uh, gang leader type, you know, mafia style guy. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was, and he did it. Like you guys said, like, he nailed it so well. And he plays these roles, these different Earth roles so well or different reality roles so well. And I want to see more of it. I think it's hilarious. And, and he never fails to entertain me. Right. And in terms of writing-wise, it made sense because in hour three – what Cisco brought is this is the destiny has been been re rewritten that Cisco still has the same power he had in normal reality whatever you want to call it in the real world yeah. he's, <laughs> still that, he's still a viber yeah. he's still a viber yeah. he can yeah. still vibe um he just does it in a different way and not necessarily to help people but to help himself so he's much more self-interest motivated uh, which which leads us to the conclusion of the episode. I don't know about, no pun intended, um, but did anybody feel like the conclusion was rushed with um, defeating uh, Deegan and evil Superman? Um, eh. I don't know if I felt it was rushed. I mean, it... Was it too slow? No, I think I thought. I mean, as far as pacing wise, I thought it was well paced. Um, I think for me, I, the the big question mark for me is, and it, it is for everyone is, you know, what exactly did Oliver bargain barter uh, when he was with the mo with the monitor? Yeah, but as I, far I didn't as, have a problem with the ending. I thought it was all right. 
You didn't or you did have a problem with it? I, I didn't have a problem with it. I, it didn't it didn't seem rushed. It didn't seem too slow. It seemed about right how it would all go down. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, it was a little surprising they brought Lois in to help out. I didn't expect that, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. maybe they wanted to showcase them a little bit more because we aren't going to get them. You know, so they wanted to get maybe get some more uh inner uh some more reaction from us and maybe they wanted to see like how you know how is this how is the crowd taking to this all to this lois and clark lois and superman uh combination uh which it seems like most people seem to like like this interpretation um but uh yeah uh, badass badass lois because she came came (laughs) (laughs) she wasn't there just to be like the damsel in distress or whatever no 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 she got got her hands dirty and that was i didn't have a problem with it which I know a lot of the West Island folks were like, really? You know, but I, won't, I, won't, I, won't, I won't, you know, I won't go there with the elsewhere so white, but that's a discussion for another day. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, I'll have to rewatch it, but overall, like seeing the end, it, I didn't feel rushed. I didn't feel anything, but um, kind of just more excited, especially when, during hour two and they introduced psycho pirate i was like oh my god yeah um so you know but i'm telling you i was totally geeking out over all the introductions of all these characters that i've read about over the years since i was a kid and i'm just like wait a second and then i was discussing something with will i think yesterday whatever about remembering that lila is one of the main ones to help Mm. monitor in infinite crisis and i was like wait a second what does this mean and um <clears throat> so i've been spiraling in like all these other directions that has nothing to do with what they showed on the crossover but all these little things that were happening previously in the in this in the season on arrow with with lila um that I'm like, you know, freaking out about because there's all these other little things that were happening within the show, like in the three hours that I was like, oh my God, that could mean this or that could mean that. Um, So, you know, I'm totally okay with how they left everything. Mm -hmm. And I know so many people are not um, because everyone likes that closure (laughs) and they, they want that instant gratification of knowing how everything ends. But mm-hmm. I really enjoyed the way they left it, kind of just left that cliffhanger so you're like, oh, my God, what's about to happen? Um, I enjoy this entire crossover so much, and I'm so excited about what's to come for the next one. So, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's so many things there uh, that were that were. Again, fan service and and homage just to you know four other shows. Are I mean, the... are we in shade right now? Do me? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. I don't know the way you said that. You're like, yeah, you know, fan service, and I'm like, wait, what? No, no. It's just in the sense. I I mean, there was just so many Easter egg things that they were putting out there yeah. uh, mm-hmm. that you know that were you know every generation of DC fan. Can, could, could enjoy and I think that was mm-hmm. that was what I really for me that was what made this crossover super exciting and why I just thoroughly enjoyed it everything from seeing Barry and Kara you know crossing the globe as you know like a la Superman the movie to yeah. uh, the, obviously you know seeing what got me into the honestly in the, into DC um, mm-hmm. was with, with you know, John Wesley ship playing the 1990 version of Barry Allen and <laughs> and and, uh, and and wanting more of that, and you know, and then th- start a theory spiral. Like, okay, we go to if you know what happened to what happened. You know, he, he flicked the. I don't know if he if the monitor flicked that Barry out of existence, or he just sent him back to Earth ninety. And is he going to be the one that's going to the, actually be the one that disappears in the in the crisis, or is it going to be our our Barry? And of course, I mean, shame on us if we don't mention the uh, the. Uh, Drop about uh, about John and being a Green Lantern. Oh I mean, yes, we can't, yeah, we that can't, was cool. We can't, we can't like not talk. You know, shame on us if we don't bring that up during this podcast because that was oh a very my God, cool. Yes, moment. that was cool. Yeah, I I totally 
that one time I did actually like let out a squeak. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was so floored. I mean, I actually stood up off the sofa and just stood there. My mom's like, what, 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 what did I miss? <laughs> and I was like, the ring. <laughs> she was like, what? <laughs> um, I, because I have always thought this in the beginning, but I've only ever told a couple of people because it's not something that a lot of people know about how Hal Jordan and Oliver Queen are buddies, you know? Yeah. And yep. so I was always like, God, I wish they would have made John Green Lantern instead of Spartan, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I guess, you know, it's not really something they can bring into the DC TV world. Uh, so, but for them to hint at it like that and maybe give us some of that for, you know, next crossover, I was just so excited because this is something I've always dreamed for John Diggle since like they brought him yeah. into the show. And there's and been so like, many yeah. yeah, and there's been like nods to Green Lantern and and, and previous mm -hmm. crossovers with you know Ferris Air and the yeah. Hangar and I mean there's just mm -hmm. again every crossover has been building up to this point for two crisis. Yes. So um again it, it's it's just I'm excited for the crisis and, and also just for the Arrowverses because it seems that they are uh, building towards um, maybe breaking down the walls and having one unified universe or uh, mm -hmm. but, but also just just the payoff of of what you know I think it this crossover reminded me why we fell for these shows to begin with because it, yeah. it really did have the best elements of them all and it didn't get into the the, the silly shipping wars and people were trying to do that kind of stuff and all that on, mm -hmm. you know in their various fandoms but you know there there really wasn't much of that uh obviously they had to touch on oliver and felicity's estrangement right now and oliver did with the very oliver thing which is yeah. you know how different <laughs> but, yeah but I, I like the resolution that they had at the at the end of the crossover mm -hmm. uh, with their relationship and and how hopefully it will you know they'll pay it bring it forward um, in in seven B as far as yeah. how they learn to grow how Oliver learns how to grow with his new self which we talked about on you know last week's podcast and mm -hmm. and, and how Felicity and her new badassery is, is you know learns how to live with maybe counter counter and gentler Oliver since he's on have to he's working with uh, Star City Police now. Yeah. Well it's like Sarah and I talked had mentioned in that one that we we're kinda of tired of them always writing that kind of like, oh my God, they're gonna break up. What do we do? And then the next episode it's like everything's fine. And um, it's they actually show them working out their problems like the way a real married couple would do. And not, like, get ready to just walk out on each other at every little drop of a hat. So it was kind of nice that they gave us that much in the crossover. Like, it was like, you know, we were arguing about something stupid. Like, we shouldn't even have dealt with this. Like, it was dumb. And I love you. And, okay, we're done. We're over. Let's let's fight the bad guys. And I was happy they did that. And they didn't drag that whole thing out. Right. Um, this crossover proved to me that Oliver and Barry should be married. Um, they, they seem to just know how to work through their problems. Very um, maturity is a good word for it. They have great chemistry. Um, that that should be an Elseworld somewhere. Yeah. It's like on Earth 5000 or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, so it's it's interesting because the last crossover I I really enjoyed, um, and it and a lot of it was built around Oliver and and you could argue a lot of this one is also built around Oliver Queen as well. Um, he's kind of like the close the opening and the closing points of this whole arc. Where do you guys the think of everybody's going joke. with it? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean. Mm, I what, guess. What'd you say? I missed it, Sarah. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Veronica had said something and I was still talking. I'm like, I don't know what she just said. It's funny. It's I don't Oliver's know the butt of, butt of the jokes, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
Come on, honey. No, well, I mean, just like Will was saying before about not talking about the ring, um, we we have to talk about the scene that was not shown between mon- the monitor and Oliver. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, I think I think I think it just to me it was obvious like he made some sort of deal where he's gonna sacrifice himself. I, you know, and there's a lot of deaths and in, in, in crisis and and all the, you know, crisis on infinite earth, infinite crisis, final crisis. There is so many deaths in in mm-hmm. that in those yeah. deaths, in that series that it's, you know, a lot of these shows that adapt. Uh, that are adaptations, you know, they take so many liberties. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think you're going to see that in crisis next year. I don't think everyone's going to die. I think you're going to mm-hmm. see some people die. I think you're going to see, I think, I honestly think Oliver's going to die. I don't, I don't, I, and, you know, part of that too is because, and, you know, I haven't watched a whole lot of Arrow, but I know they're doing like a flash forward thing instead of a flashback thing this, this during the season. And so it makes me wonder if, if that's going to lead to, you know, Oliver showing Oliver's death in, in the final cry in the infinite crisis episode. So, and then, and also I know a lot of people are thinking that Barry could die, but I actually think, I wonder if they're going to sacrifice um, John Wesley ships, Barry Allen instead of, mm-hmm. instead of Grant Gustin, that would make more sense. Mm-hmm. Um, from a story standpoint, in my opinion. So I think that's what they'll do. Cause I think, I don't see the flash ending anytime soon. I know that a lot of people assume that said, Oh, that probably means that they're moving forward with the flash movie. I don't think that means that at all. I just think, I, I think introducing the John Wesley ship character, if anything made it easy for them to say, we, we can, this character, this flash version can die. We can keep the Grant Gustin version. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I touched on that earlier. I think that, I think that's probably what will happen. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it'll it'll end up being Barry from Earth ninety instead of Barry of Earth one. Uh, I'm still torn about Oliver being yeah, a sacrifice in himself. I, I I see arguments on you know on both sides. Um, I think if it you know, take keep to keep it in universe, it makes sense. I mean, he did. I mean, he, he was one of the deaths in in the in the original Crisis. Uh, it it would be the Ultimate, it, it would be a good re- sort of end of his of his arc as as far as how he has grown from the Oliver, the Playboy Oliver, yeah. to where we you know to what we're seeing the evolution this season, and and then if it and then if he sacri- you know the deal was take me, um, then that makes sense. The other. But part, but other thing is, it could have just been, you know, part of the deal was just basically a delay in Judgment Day for for Barry and, and Kara, and yeah. and that those those events have been um, predestined. But you know, it, it, throughout these shows, they talk about certain events in time have a certain way of unfolding at certain points. And at this at this juncture, it's just not the right point for for it to, to, to happen because yeah maybe the monitor still needs he still needs Barry and he still needs Kara to be able to defeat the anti monitor in the future. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. So to go off of that point, well, because I'm just as torn as you are about it, um, because what stands out to me is that co- other conversation between the monitor, Barry, and Oliver, where they try to understand what this all is. What are they being tested for? And the monitor talks about how it's not about self-sacrifice. It's mm-hmm. about knowing your yourself and who you are. And mm-hmm. But he also acknowledges that Oliver is willing to die. So I can see this playing out so many different ways. And I think that's part of the brilliance of it is because they they give you just enough, um, but they also don't give the whole thing away where um, mm-hmm. where it's it's still going to be a surprise as to whatever they do. Because, I mean, we're we are watching Arrow and we talked about it just the other week. They're not talking about Oliver in these flash forwards. So something happened and he's not there and Felicity's off the deep end. 
I don't know what's happening. Um, there's <laughs> there's a lot of crazy stuff happened. They might have had a child, and and I'm sure all of the Elicity shippers who want Maya to be the kid are kind of like, well, as long as they um, have sex in time, that'll work. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you, baby yeah. watch. <laughs> baby watch. Yeah. And you have yeah. Now you have the introduction of a sis, half sister, so she could take up the you know. I've seen that out there too that she could mm-hmm. continue to be she, she could be the new green arrow and if he if he passes away so yeah well and the thing is is like with amiko queen you know she eventually teams up with oliver in the comics and they fight together and then i think that like i don't feel like to be honest like my thing is i don't think they're going to kill off any of their main characters I feel like they're going to do a non-main character death, and that's why I definitely agree with Pete that it would be Earth Nighty Barry Allen. Because mm-hmm. then Barry Allen does die. Yep. Like Destiny yep. says, Barry Allen will die, and he's yeah. going to die. But you so need two I deaths. I totally said that. Yeah. yeah, but the thing that I'm thinking is he's balancing out Destiny. So he's one, one life for one life. And so it's somebody else may die, or something else may happen, but I just, I don't feel like Oliver, after what he already went through with Slapside and having sacrificed himself for his loved ones, he finally realized that didn't do anything. That put his wife and kid in danger. Mm. That put his friends in danger. And he realized, so I don't know if he would be like, yeah, sacrifice my life for them. I just, as much as Oliver has grown so much, because in the beginning, he probably would have been like whatever but i think that i just don't think that he would be like yeah take my life for theirs yeah right. yeah especially I, given what he's what he's just been through you're mm-hmm. right and and being playing god at least in star city and all the negative ramifications that came from that i yeah. wonder if to go to your point veronica about the one life for one life if it goes back to that, what we talk, we're talking about earlier between Kara and Deacon and how Kara's not, her destiny isn't there. Like, mm-hmm. she's not a part of the book. So why would the monitor be concerned about balancing out her death um, if it's not a part of what's been rewritten? Right. 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 Well, I think, and I think this crossover kind of, it was a way that astute DC readers would, that, recognize mm-hmm. the Kara and Barry, like what we're discussing now. And I, any one of the three, all, all three of those characters all perished in the crisis. But obviously CW is not going to be canceling any of these shows anytime soon. So that so you're I, telling I, me it's going to be brainy. Okay. No, <laughs> no, I think, I think, I think Pete's, I think Pete is correct. It's going to be more likely than not earth 90 Barry. Yeah, you guys. We were supposed to say, Pete, you're wrong. You can never be on the show again. (laughs) Pete has slammed the gavel. He has said. (laughs) Yes. Any anything else you want to say, Pete, and just be affirmed that you're right. (laughs) (laughs) No, I think I said my piece. (laughs) What What did you all think though about the way that everyone kept? saying that Oliver was darkness and blah 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 and like he's don't be like him I you know because there's so much um back and forth amongst the fandom on that and I just I, I didn't I'm not I don't know I'm, I'm maybe I'm not as sensitive I don't know I I didn't it didn't bother me as much as like a lot of the Oliver Queen fans um because in the end, like, he went up against Monitor and, and he did something. He talked with him that we don't all know about. And from what I can tell, he didn't tell Barry about it. And he didn't tell Kara about it. So whatever was discussed between him and Monitor, he kept to himself. And I, I'm just, you know, I, I feel like maybe the, the constant digs that Oliver were leading up to him actually showing that you know he's grown from this person that they all keep teasing him that he is 
Sorry, sorry to cut you off, guys. I got to head out. I got a couple little girls that really want to put candy canes on the Christmas tree. So, All right. <laughs> sorry, I got to cut this short. <laughs> the, well, you- not a problem, Pete. Do you want to sign <laughs> out now? Where can our uh, listeners find you? Yeah, um, uh, you can find me at Pacing Pete on Twitter. Um, if you want to talk uh, superheroes and all things, all things. Uh, superheroes just hit me up on twitter at basing beat um i love talking about all the stuff all the time but um thanks for having me on and uh hope we can do it again soon definitely thanks pete have a good night see you guys okay recording wise are we okay will yep we're still good okay because i want to <laughs> i want to talk about that veronica because this is something i've been waiting to say since the top of the show Um, I felt honestly like all of that um, negativity towards Oliver was actually more about Barry Allen than Allen than Oliver if they do it right Um, Mm -hmm. and it goes back to why I brought up that scene between Barry and and Iris Um, we we've been hinted at since season one that that Barry is going to do a self-sacrifice at in 2024 i believe that's correct um and he's gonna disappear and nora having gone back in time this season to meet her dad who does the self-sacrifice i think that's starting to um make iris more aware of the man she married and the Mm -hmm. potential that he is going to abandon her and leave her one day and and that's partly why she fell in love with him, but mm-hmm. that's also going to build some resentment there. So so if they, I really, I really like to think that that's why they wanted to make it clear that difference between these two characters. Because if in Crisis it turns out Oliver does make that ultimate sacrifice, um, and and that's partly why Barry ends up disappearing a few years later. Um, for um, to to uphold that kind of honor that these heroes have, I I can see Iris kind of like this is not going to end well for our family, and that's her priority. See, and that's that's really good because you know, I, like I said, I haven't followed Flash, so I you know I don't know much about what's happening and and the appearance of Nora and, and all that. So. That's something I'm definitely going to keep in mind when I uh, start watching Flash again. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's good. I I didn't even think about that, honestly, because, you know, I don't really know too much about what's going on there with Flash and Iris and his family situation. Yeah, I, I really don't. I mean, you, you, that's a very, very deep thing that you shared about Iris and Barry's relationship. And I think... Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very, it's, you're right. I think, yeah, Oliver was the butt of the jokes, but the, the more you, the more you say it, you know, when you said that, I mean, you're right. I think that was as much a reflection of Barry and his, as you said, his uh, impending sacrifice and, and all, and, you know, really hasn't been deeply explored for Iris and her, how it imp- would impact her. And I think, as you as you pointed out, I think that was a way of uh, uh, her saying that to, to Barry and, and other things that were going on during that episode really, uh, and this season, really have um, really focused on you know, that, that headline and how, how that is going to impact impact them. Right. Yeah. It it reminded me because these past few episodes of The Flash, um, we finally got resentment between Nora and Barry. Mm-hmm. And of course, much to me rolling my eyes, they wrapped it up in a single episode. So yeah. stupid. Um, but there was <laughs> the, those brief moments where she she was like, why are you risking your life? Every time you go out there, you could die. You literally were dead in my arms. And then, and then we pulled the flash trick and you're back and you're breathing again. Um, But if, if you keep doing this one day, you're not going to come back. 
and that's my reality and how how do i live with that how do you live with that um so so i don't know it's something to explore but um Mm -hmm. i part of the reason maybe why it's not standing out is because the flash has not had the best um has had a very seesawed first half of the season in terms of writing yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, and by saying that, you know, it's funny that I think about it now is Kara and Barry are doing their thing because they have their superpowers. So they're able to go out there and do stuff a little bit more than, say, Green Arrow can. Um, and now that you think about it, he's the one that actually goes to talk to Monitor. But who are the two that are out there sacrificing? So I, when it goes back to like, you know, who's going to, you know, who, quote unquote, who's going to die. Um, and, and I, I wonder, yeah, you know, that you say that Iris is, is imagining all these things that they have been told about their future. And I do remember, and I don't even remember what season it is, but where they show that like the flash dies and she doesn't have the name of him and, mm-hmm. and all that. So yeah, you know what, that, I can see now why Iris would tell Barry and then you're telling me this between Nora and Barry. So, okay. New, a new <laughs> spiral for me. <laughs> <laughs> see, I see. I am surprised because it took me to convince Veronica to watch the flash and not Will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, cause that's, that's fine. That's fine to see. I, 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 you, you need as long as I do, he doesn't care. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't care who gets credit for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I think that's also why this this crossover was so strong where I all three central characters are at their best. And mm-hmm. for viewers who are only watching one or two of the three, I I felt like it's a good way to make you curious about the mm-hmm. other shows and want to jump over especially if we know what's coming in 2019. We don't know exactly how it's going to all play out, but we do know it's there, which is something they haven't done before. They've never done the crossover, the next crossover announcement that this early. Mm-hmm. Um, so if if you if there are questions, I'm sure many people are going to start going back to those other shows and see if there's clues as to what's going to happen right. um, next fall. Mm-hmm. And also. And- and also, will the legends play a role in the upcoming crossover? And They'll have to because I mean, the crisis. The, the who is a part of it? Uh-huh. The what? Oh. <laughs> who? Uh-huh. Who? Don't be so cruel. <laughs> I, I I didn't miss them. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't I didn't miss them either. Even though I, I did, it's funny. I did watch the first few minutes of the uh, I guess. Uh, Legends oh, on the Monday night, finale, yeah. the, the mid-season finale, and uh, they had the little end joke about the oh, I guess you know the crossover joke, uh, yeah, from, from Ray. That was just, uh, yeah, I did have to. I, I, I freely admit I was laughing out loud when when Ray Palmer said that. <laughs> yeah, no, I I think that they would have to because Constantine does play a part in um, Crisis on Infinite Earth, so. Being that they have Constantine on that show now, they would probably definitely include them. Or just him. <laughs> <laughs> or just him. <laughs> yep. No. It's, it's like going to try to throw something at me, even though we're not in the same. <laughs> Oh man! Anything else? I think we covered everything. But yeah, say so. your final. Yeah, yeah weeks, I don't guys. really. Yeah, I don't have anything, anything more to say for for this this crossover. Um, oh, shout out to James Bamford. I um, I remember when we covered his one of the episodes he directed on Arrow, and I felt like his episode for the crossover. I actually really enjoyed, um, but I um, I thought that was pretty cool. So, shout out to him. I think he did a good job. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I I enjoyed it. I always like his shows when he directs. Definitely had the yeah. Um, I mean, 
the energy was just there with those fight scenes and everything. Just the yes. atmosphere. Yeah. That's the atmosphere. what I think I love so much about his shows is the fight scenes. Like I dig it. And he he doesn't shy away from like I mean, John took down all those inmates like all at once. Like I was like, that is amazing. And the killer way that he filmed Batwoman flying through the air to knock out both Green Arrow and Barry. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I definitely think that he did a great job with this episode for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, Veronica, well, it was great to have you back. And why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? They can find me on Twitter at Nerdy Chicana, N E R D Y X I C A N A. She spelled it out. She's one of us, Will. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Because most people don't know the Chicana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Will. Where can our listeners find you? Yes, you can find me at Will M. Polk. That's W I L L M P O L K. And you can find me at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our t- our crew on Twitter, at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. But most importantly, rate, subscribe, and comment on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, and even YouTube. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>